my guess says that God is moving us, moving you to a new normal. He is activating us, activating you to see, feel, and hear in the invisible world as our daily reality. Next. Sarah Jane Bigger from Scotland became a believer as an adult, but something so supernatural started happening when she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It resulted in such a supernatural hunger and passion for God. Then she began to see into the invisible world as if the invisible was more real than the natural. Her passion and gifting is for every believer to move into this same supernatural realm. What a wonderful passion, Sarah. (laughs) I asked you before we went on the air, because she's a seer, that means she can see into the invisible world. What do you see? What do you see right now? Right now, I'm aware of just the angelic and the excitement of the angelic in the room. And there is such an anticipation from heaven that everybody who's watching catches what God is doing, that there is a new explosive sight, clear sight that God wants to give everybody watching that is available to them now. And I just, even as you started to talk, I could feel the joy and the glory of the Lord all over this because it is for his bride, for his church right now, not just for odd few like me, but for many and a corporate body anointing of seeing in the spirit. This is the new that's coming. It's really, we should have all been doing this. The first (laughs) believers all did this. Amen. But right now, it's almost like it's a window for you to become normal Uh, normal based on the Bible. Uh, Sarah, uh, for those that don't understand it, will you tell us what you mean for spiritual senses and the the Mm -hmm. spiritual realm and how we're activated? Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, Apostle Paul said, didn't he, in Ephesians 6, pray in the Spirit on all occasions. And we've often thought that that is Uh, speaking in tongues, the language of the Spirit. But actually, I believe that what Paul was actually meaning was praying in the Spirit realm, engaging in the realms of the Spirit. And when he said, fix your eyes on the unseen, we use our spiritual senses to do that. So what are spiritual senses? They are our hearing in the Spirit, our seeing, our taste, our touch, and even our smell in the Spirit, that our senses are fully loaded and activated so that we can fully engage with what's happening behind the spirit realm, which is at hand, as Jesus said. So so we have these natural senses of what's going on in Mm. the natural realm, but we as believers have this spiritual senses activated. And it's it's sort of like an iceberg. Uh, You can see just a little tip of it out of the ocean. But underneath is 95% of that iceberg in Mm. the invisible realm is 95%. No wonder you can't figure things out. You're dealing with just 5% of information. (laughs) Absolutely. And that's the point, isn't it? We see a little bit. We might catch a glimpse of something out of the corner of our eye. We might hear the voice. Or we might even do what the revelator John did in Revelation 4, where he turned to see the voice when he heard something. And they heard the voice of God speak. But to get the fully loaded, full iceberg experience, as you say, you actually have to dive deeper. You have to go deeper and go, I think I thought I heard something. I think I thought I saw something. What was that? And we begin to train our senses and the spirit onto that to get the fully loaded version of what God wants us to see. Much as like seeing the angels in the room today, I'm aware of the excitement and I'm feeling it. And then I switch on, if you will, my senses in the spirit and I begin to see the angels getting excited, crowding around. What are they going to say? How are people going to respond? You know, heaven is watching how we are moving. This, according to you and your passion, is for everybody, not just a select few. And that is part of the new that God is doing right now. Um, 
after you got filled and immersed with the Spirit of God, the Ruach HaKodesh, the supernatural exploded in your life. What, what was happening? Oh, well, so, I mean, everything became alive for me. I began to see words in the Spirit, in a vision, either closed or open with my eyes open or closed. I began to hear the Word as well as see it. I began to see the angelic, and I began to even see Jesus on occasion in the room that I was in. I also had dreams and visions, and I would have impressions for people I would be praying for. So I would see things like chains around their neck or uh, clouds of oppression over them as I was praying for them that God wanted to release them from. And so there was it's a lot easier to get rid of those uh, problems in your life if you can see them and actually see them leave when you pray? Absolutely, absolutely. And that is really praying in the Spirit. So we engage it, we watch it, and as we pray, we see it shift, we see it move, we see how the angels are working, we do what Amos 3 says, and we witness what the Lord is doing, because He wants to show us what that is as His co-laboring servants and friends on the earth. And so it's a, it's a two-way thing. It's a partnership with the Lord, and it's a conversational thing as well, as we look and engage in the Spirit. And it's something it takes practice. Now, one of the things that really intrigues me is there are times when you have x-ray vision. Can you see a body part and know that it has mm -hmm. to be healed? Yeah, absolutely. God defibrillated my senses uh, one time. I was walking down the street and there was a you know, explosion in the spirit where I began to see and hear even what was going on in people's bodies like an x-ray. Mm. And as people moved, it all slowed down and I began to see that. And then I knew that I could look for that when I was praying for people. God, which part of their body needs healing? And so it's, again, a work of the Spirit, where He knows what we need. He knows if our endocrine system needs prayer, or our, or our mind needs prayer, or healing, or forgiveness may be an issue to our releasing of our body physical uh, limitation or hindrance. But actually, the Spirit of God knows what we need, and He knows how to show it to us. So there was another occasion when the Lord opened up my senses when I wasn't expecting it. And I was walking down a very busy shopping street in Glasgow, which is where I live. And all of a sudden, everything went into slow motion and everything became very still. Mm. And I began to see on the people walking towards me, spiritual clothing that they were wearing. And by that, I mean the clothes of greed or lust or, um, Ooh. or hate or fear that people were wearing in the spirit realm. And I was shocked again to see this. And I was asking the Lord, what is this? And he began just to open my ears and I, I was hearing the sound that these spiritual clothes were making. And they were all resonating different frequencies. And the spirit of fear was the one that was the highest pitched, most horrible sound that I've ever heard. And the Lord revealed to me that this traveled further than any other spirit sound that people were wearing on their bodies. This in the natural happened over a few seconds, but in the spirit it felt like a slow motion part in a movie where you feel like it's taking forever. And I was just very aware even now as I'm sharing it, I can see it, I can feel it, I'm back in the moment of re understanding that actually we asked the question, can the enemy read our mind? Well, he doesn't have to. The demons don't have to because we wear what we've partnered with and it makes a sound. And so they hear it and they know, which makes it really important for us to have breaking agreement with any spiritual limitations that we might have knowingly or unknowingly. Uh, what do you mean by a spiritual limitation? Give me an example. Okay, so spiritual limitations would be, for example, fear. If I've partnered with the spirit of fear and I'm wearing it, or worse, I've partnered with it for so long over my life, it's become one of those scorpions that I'm wearing on my back and fused to me that I live out of fear. Well, then I say, Holy Spirit, how did I get that partnership with the spirit of fear? How did I come to have this? Holy Spirit, shine your light on that that began this, and he will show us, and I believe that as we break agreement with that and say, I repent for, for partnering with it and break agreement with it, then we get released from it. And, and, and you know what's so wonderful? Uh, not many of you will be able to have Sarah pray for you one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. But Sarah is saying she has a gift from God to impart to you to be able to do what the Bible says you're supposed to do. So, Sarah, uh, you use a word uh, for us to be 
intentional. What do you mean by that? Mm. So I think intentionality is very much focused, that we have to look and we have to do what we just said earlier. If we think we thought we saw something or heard something, then focus and be intentional, like Revelator John in Revelation, and train ourselves to watch what is happening. So I would encourage those watching to read the book of Daniel, to read Ezekiel. As you said, there are images of the Spirit that Ezekiel said, even in chapter 1 that he describes, that are mind-blowing. And you think, how is this possible? God, that you operate in this way in the unseen. But if we train our senses in the Hebrews 5.14 way, we become mature in it. And as we watch it, it's almost, as I describe it, like a Polaroid camera. When you have, a, you remember the old-fashioned Polaroids, they develop slowly. And right. so when we're learning to do this, it can be a slow burn. And we have to train and watch and say, Lord, what is it you want to show me? What is it you want to say to me in this moment so that we don't miss anything? And not be afraid to ask questions. Uh, what I'm hearing you say, because this happens to me, so I want to make sure I understand this, is I think I see something, but it happens so fast I'm not sure I even saw it. What should I do? So I would take a moment and I would say, Lord, what was that? And I would begin to almost slow yourself down inside, come into that place of rest and peace intentionally and say, Lord, open my eyes, enlighten the eyes of my heart in a Ephesians 1 way, uh, where the prayer very much is, open my eyes that I may see and know you more, God. What is it you want to show me now? What is it you want to reveal to me now? And ask the Lord to, to show you. And you've taught this, I would have to imagine, to thousands of people. And now with your brand new book, mm -hmm. you're really going to multiply your gifting mm -hmm. in others. Uh, it's hard to believe so many people can do what you can do. I think it, it might be hard to believe, but I think that the enemy has known how important this gift is to the church and the body of Christ, and that he's done everything he can to shut it down and said, actually, we don't want that in the church. Let's keep it clean. Let's keep it, you know, tidy and even um, religious in a way. But actually, the Lord is saying, I am fully exploding in my church. I am releasing illumination to my church through the eyes of the heart of my my church so that the church can be the victorious bride that we know Christ wants her to be before he returns. And I truly believe that this is that era said that we are in right now where the Lord is really saying, see church and know me. See church and reveal what is actually happening in the unseen realm so that people can get set free, truly liberated from that which the enemy doesn't want us to see. What do you believe in your heart of hearts, people that read your brand new book and listen to your teaching? CDs, it's going to happen to them in your heart. Oh, I, tr I, I truly believe that those watching, you watching right now, are going to have explosive encounters with the living God, that you will get to know Holy Spirit, that you will follow His ways, that you will find Jesus, who is the gateway to the unseen realm, and you will see His face and you will see His kingdom in a way that you have never seen before, that you will be empowered and that we will be together corporately, the bride of Christ that is moving in victory and conquering like we never have before. And I believe that this is the hour for that. I do too. Sarah Jane carries an impartation to fast forward your growth in your spiritual senses. I'll have her pray for you when we return. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! Call now and get Sarah Jane Biggert's brand new book, Seeing Beyond, How to Make Supernatural Sight Your Daily Reality, plus her three-part audio CD teaching set, Experiencing God's Secret Garden. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9805. Seeing Beyond is your invitation to engage all your spiritual senses. Start seeing past your natural daily reality into your supernatural new norm. You will receive Sarah Jane's book, Seeing Beyond, 
Through it, you will learn how to access the spirit realm easily, discover the key to supernatural encounters, embrace the assignment of prophetic intercession and spiritual warfare, commune with the Lord and His angelic realm, uncover fresh biblical revelation, defeat the dark side of the invisible realm. You will also receive Sarah Jane's exclusive three-part audio CD teaching series, Experiencing God's Secret Garden on CD1. Sarah Jane invites you to enter into the secret garden with her. Unlock the areas of your life getting in the way of experiencing the fullness of Jesus. On CD2, discover how to face up to the blockages that God is shining a light on, what the garden might look like for different people, and how to cultivate your garden. On CD3, you will understand the fulfillment of a life spent in the secret place of Almighty God. Learn the steps to take to be able to reap the fruits and blessings from your own garden. This is the key to enter the glory, your own secret place with God. Other seers and prophets are calling this brand new book, literally their words, a masterpiece. Don't miss out on getting Sarah Jane Biggert's brand new book, Seeing Beyond, How to Make Supernatural Sight Your Daily Reality, plus her three-part audio CD teaching set, Experiencing God's Secret Garden. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9805. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, PO Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 282. Please specify offer number 9805 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. And, and now all of you know about a doctor's physical health check. But have you ever heard of a spiritual health check? You teach on that. I do, I do. And the important thing is that we are completely free to receive that revelation from God as clearly and as accurately as possible. And so anything that's getting in the way of that are partnerships with spirits of fear, as we've already talked about, or partnership with things like unforgiveness. Bible teaches us, Jesus teaches us that unforgiveness can be the biggest blockage to everything that the Lord has for us. And so actually, if we don't deal with any unforgiveness in our lives, we are not going to get the fullness of everything that the Lord has for us in the unseen realms. The other things could be generational issues, generational issues that we won't know cerebrally. We haven't known it from our history or we haven't known it from a family member telling us, but we know it by the Spirit of God. So when we ask Holy Spirit, show me any limitations or anything that's getting in the way of my full engagement with the realm of the Spirit, then He will reveal it to us. I truly believe that. And He has done it for countless and many people people to show us where the hindrances are. And even many Christians I know and I've met go to spirit guides, go to spirit fairs and other things. And I've met people who said, well, I know God and I know Holy Spirit, but I don't know Jesus. But I know the spirit realm and my spirit guide talks to me. And then you have to talk to them about Jesus and get them engaged with Jesus because he is the only doorway that we would recommend you go through. You no, know, I'm so glad you did this extensive teaching because uh, my producers tell me this is so significant. You teach on what you call the secret garden. Mm. Just very briefly, what is the secret mm. garden? So the secret garden is really the access to that realm of the unseen that we've been talking about, Sid. And it really is that meeting place that is available to everybody who wants to meet with Jesus. There is an invitation to sit with him, to go into that place that Matthew 6, 6 says, to meet in the secret place with him, that timio, that secret room, if you will, that is the garden of flourishing, the garden of fruitfulness that even John 15 talks about. That place of abiding, that place of oneness and union with the Lord. And I love especially Song of Songs, that it talks about that love story between us and Jesus, where we meet with our beloved and he brings us into a place of fruitful garden and fruitful growth. And my personal invitation was very much after a really hard time. Our goddaughter had died in a horrible accident. Myself and my husband were at a place 
that was in a devastating place, not knowing how to pray, not knowing how to move forward. And actually the Spirit of God met me with a word from a senior minister who took me aside um, at a healing training course that I was at sometime after our goddaughter had died. And he said to me, I see Jesus inviting you to come and sit with him under a tree. And as he said that, it was completely illuminated to me. And I could see Jesus sitting there almost like on a picnic rug in the old traditional, old fashioned way of that red and white checkered rug. And he said, come and sit with me. And as the minister said the word, I heard Jesus's voice. I saw the back of his head and the back of his body in front of this beautiful view, in front of this amazing garden, like rolling hills in the English countryside that I was used to seeing as a child. And that sense of it being so easy and so freeing just to come and sit down with him. And you know what? I did that. I just went and sat with him and I could see myself and feel myself doing that in the spirit. And I sat with him there for a while and just put my head on his shoulders. And he just said, just rest just be with me and almost just forget everything about the pain and the grief and the horror of the last few months that you've walked through. And you know what? That healing is available to you now. That grief that you're carrying or that difficulty and confusion that you're carrying is available to you now. And he has this place of just meeting with him that is so free and easy, that isn't for tragedy and tragic times and difficult times only, it is for every day. And actually in that moment, I thought, all I need to do is be with you, Jesus, in this secret place. All I need to do is meet with you in the garden where you are and the garden that you've provided for me. And I believe that's for you too watching. There is an individual bespoke garden that is yours with your savior, with your Jesus, and he wants to bring healing and joy and liberation to you. And it's so easy. There is no striving. It's so restful and it's beautiful. And it's a place of intimacy. It's a place of knowing who our beloved is, our bridegroom is, and it's a real um, key to accessing all of the kingdom of God, I believe, for this hour and this era. And it's available to all of us. I want you to pray a brief prayer in a moment for us all to have the faith to enter that secret garden. Mm. But the first rule of entering is to have your own experiential knowledge of God. Please repeat this prayer after me. Get to know the greatest love that any human could know on this earth, the love of God, the pure love of God. Repeat this prayer after me and mean it to the best of your ability. Dear God, out loud, dear God, I'm a sinner. I'm so sorry for my mistakes. I believe your blood washes me clean. And because I'm clean now, Jesus, come and live inside of me. Thank you for saving me from my sins. I make you Lord of every area of my life. Amen. Sarah, please pray. Mm. So I see in the spirit that Jesus is opening a door to you right now. And I pray that you would hear him say, I know you. As Jesus is saying to you, the invitation to walk in through that door that he is opening before you now. And I bless you to enter into that place of rest. I bless you to enter in to that place of sitting with him and getting to know him as much as he knows you. And I bless you with an impartation to see and know him with your spirit spiritual senses fully opened to access the realm of the angelic, the realms of the spirit that are unseen right now, but will be seen to you as you meet with Jesus in that secret place. I bless you to meet with him in the secret garden today.